The coldest I've raced in, it was probably 10 below zero. We've raced when it's 25 below and windy. That gets really chilly in a hurry. The tracks get pretty hot in the desert. You're constantly putting a lot of abuse on the cart. There's no such thing as like drifting calmly. Things can go wrong, and if they go wrong, you're in survival at that point and not into race mode anymore. These races can get extremely hot. It definitely can put an impact on you. It can get crazy out here, up to 118, 119. And you've never been out here, it's very dangerous. These engines operate at very high temperature for eight to 10 hours, nonstop abuse. At 115 degrees, engine can get super hot sometimes. The cold is hard on equipment. Lubrication is key. Racing to me has been a very large part of my life. I got my first motorcycle when I was 10 years old. I learned how to ride that motorcycle on Big Lake. My name is Mark Huck. I'm the president and racer in a club of folks that race motorcycles on frozen Big Lake in Alaska. I run a 2004 Kawasaki KX250 with a 301 overbore in the engine. And the biggest thing you'll notice about the bike are the screws and the tires for traction. We're kind of similar to American flat track racing, only we're on the ice with a studded tire. The snow gives us our track. Um, we can't lay out of the track without the snow, so having more snow makes our retaining walls taller. We can have 50 below in Fairbanks in the wintertime. It's extreme. Lubrication's viscosity changes with temperature. It's tough on equipment. Top speeds on the track are slightly exceeding 70 miles an hour, so that's a pretty stout wind chill. It would damage you severely if you're not protected. I wear a standard motocross boot, typically long johns, and really heavy gloves. A gator, an overhead, and neck protection. We're a big family. Uh, we're all friends. We're always helping each other out. Guy has mechanical in the pits. It's not uncommon to see three or four of us run over there and see if we can't get it fixed before the next heat because we like everybody on the track. I like going fast. I like getting close to a guy and making passes and battling for the lead. I've been racing since I was 10. I've been riding since I was about six. My name is Corey Skaggs, and we're here at Glen Helen racing the 10 hour endurance motocross race. This team has four guys on it. The first guy went off, he raced for an hour. When riders come in and we gassed up the bike, we interchange information based on the track, how the bike's running, if there's anything that we need to do to the bike. Pit stop, if it's just gas and switching riders, it can just be 30 to 45 seconds. It's just like a positive motivation when you see your, all your teammates and your crew helping you get transitions from rider to rider. Having fun is the best part. <laughs> This race has a mix of everything. Uphills, downhills, jumps, street sections, rock sections, everything that you can think of. It can definitely get crazy dusty out here, and it can get extremely hot at 115 degrees. It's definitely strenuous. I mean, riding a bike for that long, it can definitely get to you. We gotta constantly be checking all the fluids in the bike. Radiator coolant, the engine oil. During the endurance race, it's gonna be long and you know what you're getting yourself into, but you just gotta tough it up and just keep on going. I like racing for the challenge and I've always enjoyed cars. The race team consists of me, my brother, and my dad. Way better. 
My name is Kent Hamilton, and I ice race cars with the Alaska Sports Car Alliance Club. That one doesn't want to go away. Maybe that was a good one. It's hanging on. <laughs> there it goes. The racing community in Alaska is very friendly. We all try and help each other out for the most part. People have been racing with the Alaska Sports Car Club since 1958. We will race in pretty much any temperature. The coldest temperature that we've raced in is about 25 below. We're trying to fight for traction where there is no traction. We can run our super stud tires, which are winter tires with either bolts or screws to make it grip on the ice. It take me about eight hours per tire. I'd go to the inside of the tire and start putting screws in from the inside out. So we're driving on the tips of the screws. From the outside, looks like everything is happening in slow motion, but inside the car, it's just a frantic mess. Everybody's fighting the wheel, fighting the throttle pedal trying to find anything for traction. It's very busy inside the car. In ice racing, the ice gets polished off and there's no grip, there's nowhere to go. But this year we had good snow berms and people were able to use the snow berms to help them turn. They'll drift to the outside on purpose and push the car up against the snow bank and let the snow bank help them get around the corner. We'll have pretty much any car you'll find driving on the streets. My car is a 1992 BMW 325. There's a lot of Subarus. One guy runs a Volvo, anywhere from $500 beaters that can barely get down the road to $35,000 sport cars. Zero to negative 20. Most cars are pretty much equipped to handle it. You need to make sure that your antifreeze is good. And I've got some other friends that race down south in the desert racing, and they're having to deal with the other end of the spectrum where it's too hot, 110, 120 degrees. From the start of the course till the end of the course, keep your car sideways the entire time and not straighten out at any point. Drifting is a sport where you need to maintain the loss of control of your car. My name's Raz Naor and I drift. Qualifying, you run a solo run and you get judged based on where you are on the track and the speed you're carrying and the amount of corrections you're doing. But the the main goal is to keep the car sideways because if you straighten out, you get an automatic zero. Based on your qualifying score, you get matched up against another driver. They're called battles or tandems. You have the lead car, which has to run the pre-designated line that the judges laid out. And then the follow car has to essentially become his shadow and stay as close as he can to him without uh, making contact and just being fluid. They judge you based on your speed, your style, your angle, then of course where you are on the actual track. And then you switch, and then the lead car becomes the follow car. And then based on who led better and who followed better, there's a winner. This car behind me is a Nissan 350Z. It's a 2003. The power plant's pretty stock. What's modified on it is the steering angle. It has a PBM angle kit. If you're drifting, you want to have uh, upgrade the differential so the wheels spin more or less together. It obviously has a cage, all the goodies, but as far as performance goes, it's a stock motor. On a car like the 350Z, I'll go through about six tires on a drift weekend. The tracks get pretty hot. They're usually in the middle of nowhere in the desert. The number one issue that drifters have is cooling the car down uh, in between runs because you're putting a lot of abuse on the car constantly. So as soon as you break traction, you have to be on the gas, you have to be on the brake, you have to be doing all these different things that put a lot of abuse on the car. It gets really hot in there, sometimes you have sweat drip into your eyes, especially wearing the helmet, then you definitely make sure the car stays cool. The Iron Dog is a race from Anchorage, Alaska to Fairbanks. It's 2,000 miles over a very vast terrain. Rivers, swamps, lakes, one temperature you know could be 30 degrees above zero and drop to 40 or 50 below in just a few hundred miles. 
it's the world's longest, toughest snowmobile race. There's nothing like it in the world. My name is Eric Watson. I compete in the Iron Dog. This machine behind me is what we call a snow machine. Other people call it a snowmobile. It's a pretty highly modified piece of equipment to withstand the punishment of the Iron Dog race. It's a, a four-wheeler with a track and some skis on it. It's similar to like a Baja vehicle. The race, even though it takes seven days to complete, it actually run in, in about 40 hours uh, competitively. It's got various stage points, uh, fuel stops. Less than two days to go 2,000 miles is, is, is pretty crazy. Top speeds can be over 100 miles an hour. Some of the things that a lot of people don't see is the type of elements that we go through. We do a lot of water skipping. These are snow machines, but they do float if you keep the speed up on them. There's a lot of things to take into account. Mentally is, is when you're miserable or things aren't going right. A lot of people become susceptible to, to the mental challenge more than the physical. It's not made for everybody, you know? And every year, if you learn something new, that's what draws people to come back every year. They may think that they're tougher the next year than they were the year before. It's like a perfect wave for a surfer. It's glassy, it's very smooth, and you can go as fast as you want. We're in Glamis, California. Uh, they call it the sand capital of the world. You bring your toys, you have a lot of fun. And it is a lifestyle. People come out here because it's a part of their life. My name is John Twitmeyer and I'm a contractor. And my second job is coming out here and having fun. Glamis is 118,000 acres. It's very sandy. We call it Little Egypt. It's different than anything else I've ever heard of. I mean, you have to put a different kind of tire to run out here. Like my buddies will say, dude, you're nuts. It's 120 out there. So what? I'm gonna go have fun, dude. There's nobody there. It's like having a skate park all to yourself if you're a skater. Those gigantic bowls, you know? I thought, oh my God, am I gonna die? The next thing you know, you're just cruising around this gigantic, it's like a, a salad bowl out in the middle of nowhere. You can go as fast as you want in that thing. If you come out here with some friends and you've never been out here, it's very dangerous. I mean, there's sheer drop-offs on the other side. That one is called a, a Joe Fab Sand Limo. You have to run really good fluids in the motor, and you have to have a really big fan on that radiator. Make sure you use the best radiator fluid on the market, the best oil on the market. And it literally is a limo. When you want power, it's there. When you want to cruise, you can do that too. I really want to say you can toss it around like a salad, but... <laughs> There is a lot of freedom out here to go as fast as you want, to do whatever you want, and it's legal. You can't get in trouble for it. Well, you can, but we don't. You know? <laughs> I don't think there's anything else out there that, that makes me happy right now, going fast and, and uh, you know being competitive. Mentally, if you're going into the race, with a bad attitude, you're not gonna do well. You gotta go in with perfect attitude and be focused on what your end goal is, and that's to win the race. If, if someone's sliding on the track, it's, they're probably in trouble. Here, we're just doing it on purpose. Just wanna have fun, man. That's, that's why we're all out there. I think it takes just a little bit of insanity to get on a 60 horsepower chainsaw and race it around when it's really cold outside. <laughs> After drilling 936 screws per tire, it's time for a beer. <laughs> the only thing I'd rather be doing right now as we're talking is driving my car. So let's pack it up and let's go for a ride over the hill.